Got some news here. Well, many developments. Obviously, it is. Uh, we're filming this Monday. And every time we come in on a Monday, it's like the news, you know, it builds up over the weekend and all that. Hmm. And then and then we, I got to break it down. Okay, you know, you got to take the important stories, put it all together. As we were leaving at the end of the week, it was TikTok stuff. TikTok was smoked. And then actually that kind of changes a little bit. Yeah, and so it's not too bad now. We have an update on that. But I want to kick it off with some iPhone news. And actually, I kind of like this one. Uh, Apparently, there's a chance here, uh, well, if this leaker is to be believed, but this guy's been actually fairly accurate in the past, there's a chance we get that the little iPhone gets the name iPhone 12 mini for the next generation. Mm. They bring the mini back. You didn't see that. That was the, the iPod had a mini. Yeah. The iPad had a mini. Imagine an iPhone mini, and you just make it clear to the customers. Okay, so first of all, this guy... Love to dream. We've we've talked about him on the show before. He does these amazing tweets. Look at that tweet. Yeah. No context. Very straightforward, though. Yes. It's uh. Yeah. It, but it's almost art when you look at it. Yeah. Twelve mini. I don't know why he doesn't put a space beside the mini, but anyway, twelve mini, twelve, twelve pro, twelve pro max. Huh. All right, that's the whole tweet, and just because of who he is, people know what it means. They know to read into it and they know to write an article. So we're on Apple Insider, but you know they probably posted it on 9 to 5 and they probably posted it on Mac Rumors and whatever just because this guy tweets that. I love it. Very anyway, practical. So supposedly he's got some intel that they move in this direction and they just straight up called the little one the uh, iPhone 12 mini. And I'll tell you why I like this. Well, I like this because the naming thing has gotten wacky recently in, in recent years with the I, mean, I don't even know what Google's going to do with the upcoming five mm -hmm. and the, the the A, they bring the A in with the four, you know. Yeah. And then everybody got crazy in the high end with, well, Apple goes with the Pro, Samsung's all the way to Ultra, and you yes. don't know what these things mean. They just, it sounds great. That's yeah. amazing. The amazing version. Mini, what I love about it, it just tells you immediately what the thing is. Uh, mm -hmm. anybody regardless of their enthusiasm for technology could just be like i got the mini one yeah. or or you know what i would love for christmas the mini the i want the mini one it's very uh descriptive yes which is which is nice that's what i like about it just get straight to the point and it's still i mean you look at this list and you still have the pro max problem which is just uh -huh. holy smokes that's a lot going on there it could have could it have been the Pro Plus? I guess they probably sold a few Maxes. But anyway, nonetheless, I'm not going to complain because they may very well give us the Mini. So the way this would break down, the uh, Mini would be the 5.4-inch model, which, by the way, I had the later case. It's not here right now, but I had the later case already for the Mini model, if they call it that. It's tiny. Oh. And I did a video, actually, showcasing it. The That small iPhone is small, dare I say, Mini. Huh. Uh, however, the uh, the 6.1 inch models they would be uh, that would be the standard model, right? That would be the the 6.1 inch model would just be the iPhone 12, and then the Pro version would be the 6.1 as well, and the Max version would be 6.7. So you would have two at 6.1 inches, the Mini at 5.4, and the Max model at 6.7 inches. So. I'm kind of a fan of this. I hope they go for it. Keep in mind as well, though, the spec sheet is not going to be the same for all of them. Beyond scale, obviously, you have some different specs that come along with the Pro designation. I don't know which one's going to be the most popular, but if they're able to hit the price, some of the rumored pricing on that mini model, mm -hmm. you get it into the sixes or something like that, mm -hmm. they can move a lot of those units. It could be a lot of people asking for a mini iPhone this so holiday season. Are they going to replace this with the SE, you think? Well, that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting take. Or I think when, No, no, I know what you're saying. Well, yeah. it, look, why do you have people obviously there's a demand, people are interested in smaller phones. Mm -hmm. And the SE was kind of evidence of that even though it was the old form factor, they could have made the ultimate phone, and maybe that's what this mini model is. Maybe it is the ultimate phone mm -hmm. for a lot of people, for the small form factor people. Uh the SE is kind of like a holdover. Maybe the SE was even an experiment to see if people still wanted a small phone. Right. It had the issue with the screen-to-body ratio because it was based on an old formula. But you take, yeah, the 12 mini in the hand is roughly the same scale as this, just with an in increased screen size and various other 
spec upgrades. So maybe you don't need the SE. However, one thing you're not going to do with the 12 mini will is get the price to SE level. So mm -hmm. I think they can coexist. However, it's a tougher decision now for somebody in the market for the small form factor phone because obviously the display on that model is not great on the mm -hmm. SE as it is today. Now they're going to try to convince, well, they're going to try to put together a few extra bucks to step up to the to the 12 mini if they still haven't made their choice and they're cross shopping the SE versus the mini model. That's going to be a tougher, mm. tougher deal to make. If they're able to free up a few extra bucks, I think the 12 mini is the ultimate small iPhone for mm. people. But that's no surprise if if you want to spend the money. Right. Obviously. It is not even out yet. So, yeah. Uh, we have another report here from uh, the cybersecurity contributor over at Forbes, Zach Doffman. We've we've covered him in the past. He writes interesting things about, uh, well, specifically security breaches or things to be aware of. This was the guy who reported on the iMessage thing where people weren't removing the geotags from the images they were sharing via iMessage and people could pinpoint their location based on that. And he was saying, hey, make sure to remove that data prior to sending uh, an iMessage or snap a photo right within iMessage before sending it because then that data would be stripped at that moment. Of course, social media does this. Certain other platforms, messaging platforms don't, including mm -hmm. iMessage for the time being. Anyway, he's got a new report here why you should stop using other people's iPhone cables. And uh, as suspected, he's done a little bit of... Uh, research here and uh, discovered that there's a company called uh, OMG, O.MG, and they are currently manufacturing a keylogger cable in the exact fashion of the official Apple lightning cable. And this actually made news a little while ago. Uh, I guess it was like a year ago. But at that moment, the cable they were producing was not identical to an Apple cable. And actually this image you're looking at here is an older version as well, which might be the reason the connector's a bit blurred out there. The new one, if you go back to the original article and scroll down, the new cable is a little bit more. The new cable's indistinguishable. It's a one-to-one. -one. Hmm. And he's had to miniaturize components and, and all the rest. Of course they say, oh, you know, we were doing this for uh, security research, you know, you know how that goes. You're not making it for hackers or for people who are trying to do something nefarious. You're doing it for those that are trying to know what's out there in order to stop something that's nefarious from taking place. Mm -hmm. Anyways, in the video, it showcases how the thing operates. It's kind of amazing they're able to pack all that tech in there. If you were to plug this into somebody's lightning keyboard, let's say on their Mac, it would then be capable of not only logging whatever happens on yeah. that keyboard, but also letting you then later wirelessly connect to the cable mm -hmm. to extract everything that took place without physically being there, without needing to retrieve the cable to see what it logged. And so this is like, when you see the engineering capability here to create a cable that looks identical to an Apple charge cable, capable of extracting information from devices that are plugged into it, you say, oh my God, you rethink every place every time you plug into anyone else's cable yes. this may not be an issue for you in your trusted environments but of course this is where my head and this is not what this cable is designed for but in my head you know all the people they plug in in the uber yeah yeah, yeah. give me the charge cable uh -huh. and just or at the hotel or wh whatever mm -hmm. wherever you may encounter a cable that doesn't belong to you the uh, the other report that we talked about you know maybe a couple months ago in airports where they would actually, a hacker may install some kind of uh, malware onto one of those charge terminals that people right. would then use. So this is just to get people thinking, hey, consider the source when you're about to plug into the cable. In this case, it's targeting specifically keyboards that use this cable, the Apple official keyboard. Uh, but presumably this stuff could be adapted for all kinds of different devices they could potentially plug into it. So uh, careful when your friends hand you the cable. Are they really your friends? Yes. Careful They're, when you're when you're typing away on the... Yeah. You know what I'm saying here? And I guess at work too, right? If somebody at work try to mess with you, mm. want to see what you're up to, mm -hmm. 
they slap that in, you wouldn't notice the difference if you had the Apple official keyboard with the lightning connector. Yeah. I was going to say it's uh, pretty impressive here that they're able to pack that in, like you said. And I'm guessing it also charges as well. Yeah. They right? added wireless trig triggering to provide autonomous location awareness. And uh, they opened up access to the large amount of storage inside the cable so you can put malware executables into your payloads. Mm -hmm crazy man it, it looks like a one-to-one -one replica yeah. apparently it took a lot of work the previous generation cables and again if you watch the video you can see the connector on the lightning end would have to be larger to house the components uh -huh. and therefore people could discern hey that's not an official apple cable uh -huh. this one you look at the one-to-one -one, it's uh well a lot of people would be fooled including myself mm -hmm. We got a new OnePlus smartphone coming out, OnePlus 8T, officially launching October 14th. This is news took place this morning. Believe it or not, OnePlus still, they got more to say, always. It's mm -hmm. a lot of launches now that you have the, the Nord lineup, which just took place. Mm -hmm. Of course, we had the 8 and the 8 Pro. A lot of people forgot about the 8 because you reach for the Pro uh -huh. and the 8 was a bit more, well, it was, it was, it was, it was tough at the price that it was at. It was a, it was like 800 bucks, I believe, the regular. Anyway, we're doing an 8T now, and uh, they've got this tagline, Ultra Stops at Nothing, as well as a preview video showcasing how uh, young and cool they are, as you would do if you were OnePlus. Uh, you never stop. You never rest. You never compromise. And uh, I don't know about you, Will, but this is, when I think about my life, this is pretty much how it goes. This is what I'm up to on a regular Sort of daily basis as I interact with my OnePlus device, I I do all these things. Do some painting. Yeah, I do all these things. This is a. Uh, I'm can't. It, I mean, I, I got to put a lot of those things on pause with the lockdown the way it is right now. Those people they're not putting anything on pause. Yeah. They're jumping off the cliffs. They're uh, although they were outdoors for a lot of those activities, the skateboarding and. Yeah, they never stopped. I did play. I I did play a little bit of the new Tony Hawk stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you know, the, nice. the remastered. Uh-huh. You know, a kickflip here and there. Okay, that's good. You know, uh, you got to get the high score. You grind on the rail. You jump. You do something. You grind. You keep grinding. You mm -hmm. got to get the combo effect going. Yeah, yeah. So, quick recap on that. Anyway, speculation uh, surrounding the AT. What will it be? How premium? People want to know about the price. Uh, apparently, they are expected to exclude a pro variant. So then where does this one fit in? bit confusing because, you, of course, you had... I just asked you. You just tracked down. I don't know where I put it. You just tracked down one of my favorite phones right here, which is, uh, of course, that's the, uh, the 8 Pro. Yes. I was never really using the regular 8. So then what do they do with the 8T? Is it a value play? Is it around the same price as the regular eight it, it without the pro designation then the, presumably the pro you keep selling and people are still interested in it uh maybe they got to be more aggressive on the price i don't really know current rumors suggest a snapdragon 865 plus chipset that's expensive rumors suggest a 120 hertz refresh rate display that's expensive rumors suggest a very samsung like camera array that's expensive Rumors suggest the 65 watt charging standard. That's expensive. So, so they're going for flagship. I don't know, man. Those specs sound like it, but they're not going to use the pro designation. And presumably they still have the 8 Pro. So I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, Will. Maybe they're just going to give you more for less. Hmm. Maybe it's possible. Yeah. Price I'm trying makes to, a huge difference. I remember in my head the previous T series of devices. They were almost always an upgrade in every fashion. Yes. So... We'll see. Anyways, it's taking place being streamed October 14th at 10 a.m. Maybe we'll stream it here. I'm not really sure yet. We're trying to get to the bottom of it and uh, and see if we can take part in some way. OnePlus is always looking for opportunities to bring the latest technology to our tech-savvy users. As soon as we feel it meets our high standards, this is from Pete Lau. He says, once again, the 8T is raising the bar in terms of user experience, and they say there are some new features that we are excited to introduce for the first time in a OnePlus device. That's his words. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see what that is exactly. Sony has apologized for the PlayStation 5 pre-order fiasco. Mm. I don't know if you followed that along with that, but uh, it was a bit of a mishap on the pre-orders because some of the retailers were like, whoa, wait, are we going now? Yeah. 
Walmart did it. Best Buy did it. Whoa, wait. Are we going now? Did he go? Because I'm going to go if he goes. Yeah. Did the race start yet? Because I want that pre-order on my site. Yeah. So it was a bit of a fiasco, and then people were scrambling, and websites weren't ready, and they were trying to put their product pages live mm -hmm. because you know how that goes. You missed the pre-order. It's over. It's gone. It's a one-time deal mm -hmm. for you as a, reta a retailer. So Sony comes out, and they just they go to Twitter, actually. And I, you know what? I'm going to say I appreciate it when a company's transparent. They just get it out yeah. the way. They just say, hey, sorry about that. So this is the tweet from PlayStation, the PlayStation Twitter handle. Let's be honest. PS5 pre-orders could have been a lot smoother. We truly apologize for that. Over the next few days, we will release more PS5 consoles for pre-order, and retailers will share more details. And more PS5s will be available through the end of the year. So they're trying to chill people a little bit. Mm -hmm. We screwed up. We're going to figure it out. We can get you your PS5s. And I have to say, Will, just in my regular life, people are asking me about PS5. They're ravenous. People are oh, yeah. asking me about PS5. I have messages. Hey, I didn't get the pre-order in time. Yeah. What's going on with the PS? Can you hook up a PS? I'm getting yeah. this. You're probably getting that as well. <laughs> yeah. Can you hook? I need Sony. I need to get in touch with Sony. We need to figure yeah. something out. But like, I don't even have one. Yeah, exactly. People, people are looking for PS5s yeah. like crazy. So... Yeah, you're right. It, a lot of it, some of it had to do with Walmart. Uh, let's see, what does it say about Walmart in here? Well, they, I think they tweeted something out like pre-orders are live now. Yes. Go get at the site. And people did. But this was before some sort of embargo that Sony kind of had. Yes, they said it would be the next day. But then I think Sony opened, did Sony open pre-orders on its site? I and, think they and, did. And then the retailers were like, well easy we want to we you can't be i don't know l l i think that's how it went down okay, i think yeah look okay the chaotic pre-order situation kicked off sony started its invite only registration for ps5 pre-orders uh eric lempel playstation worldwide marketing head had previously promised it's safe to say we'll let you know when pre-orders will happen it's not going to happen within a moment's notice and then on wednesday they said pre-orders were starting on thursday and then two hours later, Walmart kicked off its pre-orders. Yeah. So it was Walmart. Yeah. Walmart went early. Yes. And then everybody with went the, early. With some sort of tweet. And then everyone just went crazy. Everyone went nuts. And then, of course, that brings Amazon into question. And that's the next story. Amazon sent out an email to people saying, hey, about that PS5 pre-order, we might not be able to get you that PlayStation 5 mm. on launch day. And so... This, again, has to do with Sony and these companies not necessarily knowing, the retailers knowing what their volume is really going to be, what's actually going to ship to them, and what they can uh, ensure to, their, to right. their customers. So the email that came out from, from uh, Amazon was this. Let me just bring it up. We're contacting you about your order of a PlayStation 5 to let you know in advance that you may not receive this item on the day it is released due to high demand. We'll make every effort to get the item to you as soon as possible once released. You can track your shipment, blah, blah, blah. Apologies. See you soon. Sincerely, Amazon Customer Service. Now, as you know, Will, a big part of buying one of these things at launch is getting it at launch. Mm -hmm. A big part of it is being a part of the whole hype. And when you get your pre-order in and it says it's going to ship on launch day, that's kind of a big deal to you. Mm -hmm. So to receive an email after that says, oh, yeah, you're probably not going to get it on launch is a bit, well, that's not what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And it looks bad on Amazon. However, it appears it's not necessarily Amazon's fault, seeing as though Sony doesn't really know what they're what they're going to be able to deliver to the retailer in the first place however if you look at the tweet from the last story sony seems to imply they're going to figure it out or that it, it, things look promising they say we apologize we're going to get more systems before the end of the year mm. so amazon may still be able to meet that criteria they're just hedging in order so that uh, customers at least have the idea in their mind that it's a possibility mm -hmm. that they don't get it uh, Walmart cancel. Walmart also had to cancel some orders after realizing the supply they had wasn't as great as the demand. So, what does this all mean? Uh, is the demand that much higher, or were people unprepared? Which one is it? I think the demand is higher than expected. Hmm. As much as we knew, gaming 
was was having a resurgence. It appears to me, I mean, these are the biggest retail players in the world, yeah. and and Sony's a big company. Well, you know, you would you would presume that if the volume was whatever they had hoped to sell in the first year, I, I think they sold or in the first couple of weeks, it was like two million of the previous model PS4, mm -hmm. and they knew they were going to do more than that. So are we talking about how many pre-orders are we talking about? And what is the actual interest? It, it appears to me to be very high. And now, of course, I'm contributing to the interest and the and the demand because I'm saying, oh, you can't get it. It might be hard to get one. Now people are trying even hard. You see what's yeah. going on here? Exposure. And I think it's part of the it just seems to be part of the thing with new console launches that they have to in some way be scarce. And once they're scarce, people want them that much more. Uh -huh. Like, as soon as people started telling me, oh, you missed the pre-order, you're dead. I was like, oh, God, I need one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's There's a, a sense of urgency there. Bizarre psychology with it. But I'm not suggesting that this is manufactured or fabricated. I think it is truly hard to map the demand without knowing. You're just, mm -hmm. okay, let's put the pre-orders live. Oh, God. It's possible yeah. to be surprised. Yeah. And that might be what took place here. Another surprise to some people is the scale, the physical scale of the PlayStation. Now, this is interesting to me. We've talked about it in the past, but it's it's even more interesting to me now because I have had hands-on with the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. Mm -hmm. And the I mean it was striking to me, particularly with the S model, how small it was in person, not in pictures. It was a real shock to the system. And now, looking at these uh, renders, this is a, from an illustrator named Kaisawada. He took to Twitter to post some renders comparing the PlayStation 5 dimensions with the disk drive to different TV sizes, to the Nintendo Switch, and to the Xbox products. And to actually to the size of a game case or a Blu-ray case. So this is one of the nicer comparisons we've seen and it's got a cool cartoon style to it mm. and actually if you uh, just back out of this image and or and go scroll down and i like the the one on the top left if you don't mind yes okay so this image gives you an idea against popular tv sizes as well you have a 30 inch a 42 inch tv and a 50 inch tv and you have everything from the playstation 4 all the way up to uh the xbox series x and of course the playstation 5 is in there mm. And yeah, it's big. It's the biggest of the bunch. It's the biggest of the bunch by a lot, really. The uh -huh. PlayStation 5, and it's enormous compared to the Series S. It's closest, I guess, to the uh, Series X, but the way that they distributed the volume in that unit, because it is a rectangular prism, mm. you know, I love to go there. Yeah. As opposed to calling it a cuboid, which some people <laughs> swear by. Although either is fine. Yeah. I've already... What's a rhomboid? A rhombus. It's a rhombus? There is a rhombus. Oh, okay. But that one has, you know, you have the angles. You have uh, different angles on a rhombus. Anyways, so this is an interesting image. What do you think, Will? Is it too big? Look at it next to a 30-inch TV. It's a thick boy. Yeah, you know? Look how tall it is. I don't think you're... What are you going to yeah. do? Are you going to lay it down or are you going to stand I it like up? I like the fact that there's an image of it laying down. Um, I'm probably going to do that. You're going to lay it down. It's... Uh, yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. But hey, it, I mean, you can just hide it. People have become it, obsessed like, with this, though, Will. Like these tweets, you got 25,000 retweets on the original tweet. 25,000 retweets, 46,000 likes. People care about the size of it. Uh -huh. For whatever reason, they're shocked. And one of the things is it makes the Nintendo Switch look like, look so cool. Tiny yeah. little thing hooked up to your TV. Anyways, I don't care that much. It would have to be twice the size that it is for me to start being like hey that's a bit much does this uh give you confidence that the fact that it's bigger it seems more powerful bigger is better yeah, yeah. like the cooling it's it, there's gonna be no throttling and yeah, and, yeah, yeah maybe there's more airflow i mean they something. want you to get it instead of a gaming pc gaming pc is still bigger than that in mm -hmm. most cases so look i just the scale that they're showing it is it is large but it isn't so large that i'm very concerned yeah especially like next that. to like a 50 inch tv or something you're mm -hmm. not it's not it's no big deal it's not gonna bother me but it is bothering some 
Xbox. So, so we talk a lot about PlayStation there. One of the big topics of conversation has been around the exclusives. Sony has some pretty hard-hitting exclusive titles. And Xbox was... Microsoft was relying on Halo being a part of the launch in a big way. And then and they, they even showed it off. And then they got all the... Well, I mean, we talked about it a number of times on the show. Uh -huh. It became a meme and people were upset and we were trying to be nice. And then people got mad at us for being trying to be nice. Mm. Anyway, remember that the topic came up that Microsoft was thinking about buying TikTok. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that didn't take place. But that they had a little bit of cash there. They were like, we could use this for TikTok. Or we could just go buy Bethesda's parent company. Oh, We could just go buy game company uh responsible for fallout uh -huh. responsible for elder scrolls it also owns id software responsible for doom mm. that's a big that's a big deal mm -hmm. so they took 7.5 billion they've expanded and they've purchased uh, they've purchased this game developer now the company is called zenimax media and underneath them is Beth Bethesda and id Software, et cetera. The move grows the number of in-house Xbox game development studios to 23, up from 15 earlier this year. So there's a, it's arms race. Oh. You got to get the developers. You're going to want, if you want those exclusive titles, you need the game makers. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're aiming at here. And this is increasingly important given the fact that it's been the topic of conversation around next-gen gaming, around next-gen consoles, at least. Mm -hmm. What are the games? What are the, exclusive, what are the exclusives? That's why I care or don't care. Right. And it's been tough for Microsoft with the bad news. With the, And this at least showcases, okay, maybe we don't have the title, exclusive title you're looking for off the bat. Yeah, but soon. But look at this. Yeah. Look at these game developers we got now. They have a good lineup. Because before that, what was it? Well, it was it, without besides Halo, you have Forza. What what do you have? Huh. You don't have enough. Yeah, I guess Gears of War. That's a good one. Yeah, Gears of War. But so, anyways, this is this is a really big deal. It's a big deal from a money perspective. It might be a better buy than TikTok for oh, yeah. Microsoft. I, yeah, I would say so. It's more in line. Like they can yeah, immediately gaming. put you know. it into put it into play. Mm -hmm. It is the biggest vi uh, ever video game purchase for Microsoft. That's huge, man. And Doom is uh, on the up and up. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I seen some clips. That thing They're, looks wild. Uh, the new Doom game it's looks looking great. Bananas. Yeah, yeah that's a bright feature. So they gotta guess they gotta get the key launch titles going. Of course, in on the PlayStation side, you have the Miles Morales, the Spider Man game. And then the probably the re-release, the remastering of the previous PS4 exclusives. Mm -hmm. So people are gonna be looking at that, and they're gonna have to make a choice. But uh, if you were leaning in Microsoft's direction, this can only help. Yes, absolutely. That's a big deal. And oh, by the way, we have a comment from uh, is it Phil Spencer? What's his first name? Phil. Spen Phil Spencer. Yeah. yeah, we have a comment from Phil Spencer. Today's a landmark step. We will be adding Bethesda's catalog of hit games to Microsoft Xbox Game Pass, which now boasts more than 15 million subscribers. Mm. Big stuff there as well. So it will show up on Game Pass too. Great. All that stuff. Uh, this next one is for you, Willie. Do you're the big Oculus guy, big VR guy. Oculus Quest 2 is going to get infinite office with Logitech keyboard and adjustable pass-through. This is not, honestly, I have not spent that much time in VR. But apparently, Facebook is aiming at v you having VR instead of an actual PC. That oh, you're yeah. instead of an actual monitor or laptop, you would just have VR. Yeah, what they have now is uh, called virtual desktop, mm -hmm. and like you put your goggles on, and it's literally like an office space. Yes, and you have your monitors kind of like floating there. So, but it's in VR. It is not pass through of the real world. No, no, no. It's like strictly a different world kind of thing. Yeah, so apparently that's what they're that's what this is going to be. The Oculus browser built into Quest is Chromium based. It's compatible with all kinds of web apps. Uh, an earlier preview of something called Infinite Office showed it displaying programs streamed from your Windows PC, mm. capable of doing that. 
And then this is the coolest part for me, this thing called Pass Through Plus. It's the real world via black and white cameras instead of the virtual home environment. Mm. And there's a slider that lets you adjust pass through to, for how much real world shows through. Yeah, she's using her, her hand as like a slider. Yes, correct. Cool. Now the key part of this announcement is the keyboard. The key part is the keyboard down there. Apparently, Logitech will team up with Facebook. It's a partnership to bring the K830 into VR. You will pair it with the Quest 2, then see your hands typing on it in VR. Mm. So it's physically there, but it's in, you see what I'm saying here? They're doing some great things. That's crazy. Oculus. Yeah. Right now they have hand tracking. Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, adding a full-fledged 3D model of a keyboard and then you typing. But it is, the, but you the have the thing. keyboard. Yeah. So the keyboard is there, but then it's also rendered mm -hmm. perfectly in the VR. So it's super accurate when you like. Exactly. Type. That's crazy. That's going to yeah. be a weird mental adjustment to go on there. Uh, it's a really new announcement. So you don't have to necessarily rush out and try to buy this thing right now. I don't know how it is mapping out currently. Uh, apparently there's a, this infinite office for Quest 2 is going to give you the capability to have persistent surface panels like tables and couches, mm. and they'll be saved so you don't have to always rebuild a work environment mm. inside of your infinite office. So I don't know, man. Like you and I, I got the headset on yeah. over here. You got over there. We're typing. We're reading the whole thing. Yeah. Who needs a display? You have the, the VR. You have the immersive mm. thing going on, but then you can still interact with real world. Op I mean, it's kind of cool. It is very cool, yeah. Xiaomi has taken to the streets in India, launching their uh, mobile van sales office. <laughs> oh, is it like a pop-up shop? Yeah, they're going to roll up to your neighborhood in this little van, and they pop up the, the, uh, the side there, almost like a food truck, except yeah. they're going to sell you a, uh, a smartphone. <laughs> and they're going to go to sort of underserviced areas, rural areas of India, and they will actually go to the local market where people on the weekend might go kind of like a farmer's market or something like this. Mm. And they'll just roll up in this. And now it's not just produce and the usual knickknacks. And now it's not just the uh, small time seller, but they roll up in this and you just, you're, you're having fun on the weekend anyways. So you get the produce and you, you uh, snap up a little smartphone at the same time. And it seems like they're selling a, a bunch of stuff, including a trimmer. I didn't even know they made a trimmer. Yeah. They're trimmer 1C. A me. Trimmer. It looks like it says, since their branding is me, Xiaomi, me for India, mm. it looks like they're calling that the the me beard trimmer. <laughs> right next to the earbuds. Or, or in that case, would you say my beard trimmer? Because mm. my, you know, like M-Y. Yeah, no judgment. I'm it's sure mine. they would be okay with both. Oh, okay. All right. But they have the TV stick. They have the TV box in 4K. There's a few things you can see here. Apparently, they put this together uh, real quick. Uh, uh, so proud of our offline team who completed this project in just 40 days. Mm. So they, they, had, they were tasked with bringing the store to the people. This, of course, is especially interesting because people are trying to stay out of physical stores in India. They, the, the, the lockdown has been increasing. And so people, they can't go visit the local store as much or go indoors. It's obviously there's risk factor involved with that. So people are avoiding it. So then you just bring the truck to the outdoors and yeah. they can keep shopping. And it's cute. This little thing. Would you call that cute? Yeah. They've got a ton of stores, by the way, in India. Listen to this. They have 8,000 preferred partners, 4,000 large format retail partners, and 3,000 Xiaomi stores. That's nuts, man. It's oh, yeah. a huge footprint. And who knows? Now they take to the street. Maybe this won't be the, the only food truck <laughs> phone truck phone truck it's a new trend yeah phone truck although what a what a strange way to buy a phone it's totally spontaneously like you're at the market just picking up some some baked goods and then yeah. all of a sudden oh yeah i need a new phone too uh-huh right next to uh phone is not like a food truck the phone is not typically a spontaneous purchase but we'll yeah. see how it goes all right, TikTok. This I had to give you the update on this. So 
last time we spoke, it was uh, imminent doom, imminent danger, an extension on TikTok existing in the U.S., but however, exiting the App Store for new downloads. Well, Trump has agreed in concept, is that's his words, not mine, in concept, to a deal involving Oracle and Walmart, which we... We were a lot of people predicted this would take place. It just seemed to be taking more time than originally expected. And people want to know the details of the deal because it wasn't well known up until recently. So apparently, Oracle is going to become TikTok's cloud provider. Now, Oracle already provides cloud services to companies like Zoom for video conferencing. They will take a minority stake in the company at 12.5%. So not enormous. Walmart will jump in and take 7.5% of the company and their CEO will serve as one of the five board members of the newly created company. Hmm. TikTok, their parent company of TikTok, ByteDance, will own the remaining 80%. Hmm. However, you read that and you're like, what the heck just happened? But yeah, I thought it was going to be a buyout. They got 80% still? Yeah. Okay, so what's important to note, TikTok was already... 40% owned by those U.S. investment firms, for, uh, Sequoia and General Atlantic and whoever else. So they were 40% owned. And then of the remaining 100% that wasn't... Do you see what I'm saying? It gets kind of weird. Because mm -hmm. then you got to add 12.5 and 7.5, which is 20. So that's 60. Mm. So it's, it's, it's just weird the way that it's worded. Now it looks like they're not the majority holder. Right. But it's close. Yeah. Because if you're not including the original 40% ownership and you're looking at the new 100% to calculate, we would have to do some math. Mm -hmm. But they still own a pretty significant chunk. So there's a lot of people looking at it saying, wait, how are your, how are your concerns at rest here when they own such a significant portion still after whatever you've put everybody through? However, the way that they're going to push this deal through, the way that they're going to uh, announce it or... Uh, satisfy the public as to why anything took place. They're going to say, okay, look, Oracle's going to do the whole technological side. They will, everything will be hosted here. Nothing is going back to ByteDance in yeah. China. That's how they'll say it. Yes. But if you're a majority holder in a company or close to it and you say, yeah, I need those, I need that data chop chop then Oracle's going to have to stand up to you and say, no, 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 we can't do that. The president won't allow it. So it's a weird yeah. relationship here against the typical corporate structure where the majority shareholder or a big-time shareholder would be able to make requests or do things. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we, again, we would, we would need even more information to know what is their capacity? What are they still capable of doing? ByteDance, I'm speaking of, mm -hmm. inside of this new relationship or what they're calling a partnership, as opposed to an all-out buyout, as some people might imagine it might have had to been at the in the first place. Yeah. Now, the last piece I want to add to it is that Trump isn't really saying it's a done deal. Here's what here's what he says: I have given the deal my blessing. If they get it done, that's great. If they don't, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. I approved the deal in concept. So it's almost like he's kind of half-stepping into it too, saying, yeah, it's all right, but maybe it's not exactly to my standard yet or what I was hoping to have happen. Right. Now, some other things, quick things about TikTok. Apparently, there's part of the deal uh, saying they've got to put 25,000 jobs across the country. A new company will be incorporated in Texas. Seems like everything's happening in Texas these mm -hmm. days. And they're going to give... Uh, TikTok businesses, TikTok business will pay over five billion dollars in new taxes to the U.S. Treasury, and apparently they're going to set up a large fund for the education of American youth. And I don't know, it's going to be that's five billion as well. Mm. Five billion go to the education of the youth. Which, uh, if the youth are sitting around and scrolling TikTok all day, you got to put the five billion back in, <laughs> 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 trying to teach them something. You, you're melting their brain half the time, then you're like, we're going to teach you something too. Yeah. We got five billion for you. The balance. Since yeah. we stole your entire childhood and you scrolled it away. Yeah. Of course I'm joking. All right. Everything in moderation, mm -hmm. including moderation. That's what they say, Will. Yeah. I apologize for having done that to you right there. Yeah. I don't know why people say that. 
Uh, all right. So next up, Tesla. Tesla is preparing to launch a full self-driving subscription. This is interesting. A monthly fee. I read this headline and I thought to myself, wait a second. It wasn't that part of the deal when you bought the car that it wants the full self-driving rolled out as an update, but not owning a Tesla myself, that was early day stuff. A lot of people are not buying this option now on, on their cars. It could be like an $8,000 option, mm -hmm. the full self-driving, and they can't do it yet. Mm -hmm. So they might be thinking, why do I want to spend $8,000 on the full self-driving? Yeah. So this could be a way to get more people involved in it. Of course, it's, it, it's kind of speculation. I believe, even though the headline doesn't make it seem like it's speculation, I believe it is speculation. Uh, oh, never mind. Yeah, e Elon Musk confirmed Tesla plan to release such an option toward the end of the year with full self-driving packages priced back into focus as Tesla reintroduced an enhanced autopilot package. So enhanced autopilot is $4,000. Full self-driving is $8,000. Mm. So... It's obviously cost prohibitive for some people. They're just yeah. saying, I'm not going to add that right now. It's just too much money. So this would alleviate some of that. And it also would satisfy some of the users, some of the drivers who have a lease. It will be weird to put 8Gs into right. full self-driving. You're not even going to have the car forever. You might have a three-year lease, two-year lease. I don't know what mm -hmm. you have. So you could have the subscription during the period of time of the lease. Now, the mm -hmm. subscription would have to be expensive. This ain't going to be five bucks a month. No. It's going to have to be like 100 bucks a month, probably. Yeah. Something in that neighborhood. Yeah. But still, for someone who's financing a car or leasing a car, that's a, that's a big improvement over paying it all up front. Mm -hmm. However, most places still don't have any kind of full self-driving, so it still remains to be seen whether like how useful that subscription will be to you. But Tesla does have a, a, a pretty strict... They're, they're at least saying... They have a huge commitment, I should say, to rolling out more self-driving features quickly. Uh -huh. Elon's been saying it for a while. They actually put a put a deadline on enhanced autopilot. What are they saying the deadline is? Let's see here. Was it just... Oh, here we go. We noted it was an opportunistic move. Tesla has confirmed in a new email to customers they have until September 30th, which is the end of the quarter, to order it. But that's not their self-driving deadline, is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Anyway, the point being is they've been getting more aggressive about saying, no, it's really going to happen because they've been selling it for a long time. Yeah. But it hasn't actually been a thing that people could use, the, the full, full, yeah. full deal. I'm just really, uh, I'm still kind of like, it's like, wow, it's just full, full self-driving and then it's just an update and then that's it. Well, you know. It's not nothing to do with hardware or anything. It's just like a software update. And, and like, then you're oh, full okay. self-driving. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It's, uh, it's crazy stuff to this day, man. I mean, just the idea of everything that's involved from a technological perspective, from the hardware to the software to the to the advanced learning, you know. And I mean, it's just, it is an incredibly complex task to be making all those decisions, split second type mm -hmm. of stuff. Real, real curious to see as these features roll out to more users. Uh, yeah, how it all. Hopefully, it all goes well. Yeah, it's all software at this point. Hopefully, right? it all goes well. Yeah. Hopefully, it all goes well. All right, last one for me. This is a bit of fun. I don't know if you've ever seen this, Will. Where mm -hmm. you ever caught somebody in public? They're trying to take picture or video of themselves, or they're trying to do a TikTok dance and. And you look at it as an outsider, and it looks so absurd mm. to watch the person trying to frame them. And it, you know, maybe they take five or ten different photos, and they're really posing, and you're just trying to enjoy yourself. You know, mm -hmm. you're just trying to have a day. Mm -hmm. This, this, this brought this to your, to your uh, memory here. Yeah, that's me. I'm the dog. Yeah, exactly. You're like, what is this guy up to? Well, in this case, he's playing, I think, Beat Saber. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, but everybody looks ridiculous when they're interacting with gadgets and uh, unaware of their surroundings. Yeah. Well, the influencer is no different. And here we have an article, 30 times people spotted influencers ridiculously taking pics and then submitted evidence to the Influencers in the Wild IG account. So this is a person 
who is having the experience that you would be having in public if you saw a bunch of influencers doing mm. some goofy stuff and then you have and I actually to be to be honest uh I think it's important for people to realize what you see online is fake it's all fake Right, yeah. that image, that snap, that frame that you have, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of important to get a dose of reality. And if you ever get that behind the scenes look mm -hmm. or that reflection in the mirror, for you to process that as well and say, how cool is it now? How cool is it now that I've seen everything that was involved in making this frame take place? Yeah. Once you're no longer in the suspension, once you're no longer in the... In, uh, in your imagination or in your you're filling in the gaps yeah oh it's so perfect and the same thing goes if somebody photoshops the way their body looks or anything like this you need that healthy dose of reality so you can process the world properly. and this that's what this is this is a dose of reality so you scroll through it and you see the other angle on some of these iconic photos this is somebody getting a uh, I believe that's called a wedgie. I don't know. It's a wedgie. She's trying to get the photo on the tree, and her her uh, outfit gets gets stuck to it. Not very glamorous. This next person was trying to take, I guess, a jumping shot with the water flying. They were trying to get that kind of, and they end up inside of the fountain head first. It doesn't go well. The movement. The next the, the next guy's trying to make a hamburger look really good, and he has a. a a light bounce for the hamburger photo and i'm just if you saw just the hamburger photo on instagram you'd be saying damn that guy's got a great camera or good looking mm -hmm. hamburger or i really want that hamburger or why don't my photos look like that but you see this image and you say to yourself that's what that guy's afternoon looked like mm. that that influencer's a afternoon work. yeah it didn't look that glamorous at all and it certainly wasn't about the eating the burger no how far did he travel from the burger place to take the photo in the first place? It ain't about the burger anymore. Hey, Larry, can you unfold this uh, giant uh, reflective screen yes. here and uh, just put it behind me while I take a picture? I of mean, this from hamburger? this angle, yeah, it's just it's a totally can different thing. Now, nothing against the guy because I've done all kinds of absurd things to make great photos in public. I've done it. We've Usually around had. around a phone or something like that. Yeah. But I think this angle is important too. The BTS is the truth. Or it's closer to the truth. No image is the truth, but it's closer to the truth. You go down to the next one, the, the girl, or this girl. Oh, I'm going to go catch a photo with a bear. Not not a great idea. The bear obviously had a different idea. Uh, you can scroll down a few more. I, I have one. Oh, there's a, there is a funny one. Go down a little bit more here to when you see a caribou and a man, an older man. I mean, they're all goofy, obviously. This guy, I don't think belongs in here because he does not strike me as an influencer. But I, I, <laughs> I might be wrong. I think he just got too close to an elk. And, uh, well, of course, that's a bad idea. And he's and he's running off, but equally dumb. We have the Coachella posters on the next one. We have a really weird one at number twelve, which is uh, somebody who who set up a dancing pole on the beach without even having a really nice backdrop. Oh, fourteen, I guess. Oh, you think your numbers are different oh, than 13. mine? Thirteen. For some reason that's twelve for me. Oh. Anyway, yeah, like that. Look at that look right there. Uh, stripper oh. pole on the beach with a garbage truck in the background. And a bunch of other people there, not nearly as glamorous as it may have looked on the other end. And then just go down to number 15. Number 15 will really wreck your, or yeah, right there. That wrecks your brain a little bit. Oh, It's so strange because you know whatever photo, there's a full, full photographer there. And there's a girl lying on the beach. And then there's just like families around. And, and there's, a, there's like a little sand bucket over there. And. And there's people just enjoying their day at the beach, and then this, this they're trying to make this photo with the half naked woman there, and it's just, mm. it's so weird mm -hmm. from this angle, mm -hmm. but from the angle that went on social media that cropped all that out, it's so different the way you would perceive it. Yeah, I'm guessing this was shot with a drone. It's really high. Oh, the photo of the BTS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it looks like it could be a drone shot. Or the person is just, maybe there's a boardwalk over there. Yeah. Or some other vantage point. Either way, 
uh, very, very uh, strange. It makes you reconsider all these frames that you're forced to look at as you scroll through social media and how perfect mm -hmm. they all are and how imperfect reality actually is. Do you know what I'm saying here? Yeah. Maybe there's one more I'll give you. Uh, go to number... Number 19 is very strange. If Assuming your numbers are the same as mine. Because they were different for one moment. No, you're not. Go to 20. 20. Yeah. Look at this one. Cool. Like, what is... Go I'll describe this one again if you're just listening. This is a pool. And once again, it's a... A kind of, a, I don't know, like an erotic shot. And there's kids in the water Family wings and pool. everybody's in the it's pool. Everywhere. The pool is so crowded. But there's this other woman that's taking the photo. Look what she's targeting. Mm -hmm. Straight at the, I mean, very strange. But uh, once the person's in the influencer mindset, apparently, and it's a terrible terminology. I don't know who, I don't want to, I don't know. It's a t anyway, once in the mindset of production, it's like the whole world fades away. They're like, just get the frame. Yeah. Just get the frame at all costs. And they're not really interacting with the world in that moment. They're just interacting with their feed. And mm -hmm. it's what that becomes more important than the actual reality in that moment. And the same thing happens to the person looking at it. This photo, especially, if you were to scroll past this, you would it, it wouldn't you would not perceive the surroundings you would not perceive the environment you would not perceive the humanity you would not perceive the reality or anything close to it mm -hmm. so that's why i brought up this post yes it gives you a little laugh a little chuckle but also it encourages you to fill in the blanks if yeah. you see the post on social media and don't perceive it for your initial reaction but instead try to imagine what the surroundings looked like in order to get a, bit, a more accurate representation of the reality of the situation. Yes.